This is Julianne Good, and this is Psych One on One. Welcome. We are here to make psychology more understandable with tips for you, your family, and friends to make your lives easier and better. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty positive. It's been cooling down in Southern California, finally. And I think people are mellowing out a little bit on their issues for anger. And uh, yeah, they've been a little uh, short fused lately. I know heat does that to people, but... Anyways, my special guest tonight is Sat Khalsa, and he is from Mesa, Arizona. He is a substance abuse therapist at the Corrective Healthcare in Mesa. And we're going to be talking about men's issues this evening. How are you doing, Sat? I'm doing good. Wonderful. Can you hear me okay, Julie? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Yes, wonderful. Okay, yeah. Now, Sot and I have known each other for over 20 years now, right? Oh, man, a long time. I know. I know. It's you been know. a good friendship. We have a, a lovely group of friends over in the Phoenix area, and uh, we get to get together every once in a while. So it's nice to have you on the airwaves tonight. How are you doing? Doing good. The weather's cooled down. It's really nice. There's tons of mosquitoes over here. Ooh. Yeah. That's, That's not making people feel good. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I mean, they're not used to having mosquitoes over in the Phoenix area, right? That's kind of odd. I know. We even have them in our group rooms. Oh. <laughs> that doesn't help, does it? Another irritation factor, right? <laughs> so can you tell the audience a little bit about the work that you do in Mesa, Arizona? Okay, I work at a company, and I think I can mention their name, CHC, and um, Correctional Health Care, and we do court-appointed groups uh, in this Mesa area, and actually we're pretty much all over the valley. And we give the groups that pertain to anger management, domestic violence, substance abuse, sex offenders, uh, shoplifting, um, underage, and parenting, if I didn't mention parenting. Mm -hmm. And I teach four of those. Wow, which ones do you teach? I teach parenting, anger management, domestic violence, and substance abuse. And out of those four groups, which one has the most participants in that? Um, I, that's a hard one. I mean, our groups are full. Um, there's a lot of stress in the world today, and people let that out in, in ways that get them into these groups. And, um, you know, they reach their limit, and something happens, and they... They go over the over the limit, and and now, any time the police are called to a situation, because of the difficult financial situation in every city, if the police get called, somebody's going to go and somehow pay for all of their <laughs> coming out because it's expensive. Mm-hmm. And um, that is a very large issue with in our groups. Um, certainly, one of the commonly given reasons for their current upsetness that they didn't think that it was necessary. And um, but if they come out on a domestic violence charge, one of the two are going to go, and usually it's the one that has any marks, the one that might have any kind of substance involved. Um, So how do they make that determination, do you know? It's rough. I mean, the police have a very tough call, and, um, and then they have to, you know, if there is a court, they have to go there and defend their choice so 
but you know they have certain criteria that they go by and the men want to say <laughs> it's always the men and the women's group say why are they picking me mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's it um depends on the circumstances it always depends on the circumstances exactly yeah i children present um alcohol present that's there i i would say probably in about 45 to 50 percent of the people that do come in there for substance abuse, I mean, for um, anger management, domestic violence, that that alcohol is involved. That is the the one thing that I can say to people, you know, if you're going to go out and have a good time, make sure that you know what you're doing. Yeah, know your limits and, and stop where, yeah, exactly, walk away. Or if, if there's, you know, an, an issue that fuels up then learn to walk away from it versus engaging in that fighting, especially when there's alcohol and, and or drugs involved. Now, I used to work at a domestic violence shelter, and you're right, there were a lot of instances that that, was, that predated whatever happened uh, with, a, with, the, with the violent situation. So, yeah, it just lets down a lot of barriers and people just start going at it. Physically, so yeah, that's horrible. I mean, well, you know, the the whole situation now in the in the news with all these NFL players, uh, especially Ray Rice, and and seeing that video and Peterson, you know, and Peterson, whole. right? Exactly. I mean, it's you know, what what happened with those? I it, it it's it it seems like it's more prevalent now. Would would you agree, or is it just that the media is giving it more attention? Oh, I think that there's been, you know, we even had a, a very, you know, famous, you know, coach come forward and saying that he's known of issue after issue after issue of domestic violence among the players and their, you know, wives, spouses, girlfriends and things. And But as they just went, they were put under the table and... So yeah, that's going to come out. And certainly, in in my groups, they were we talked about it a lot in the parenting group. Um, you know, I was able to get because those pictures are available and show, and it's a, and everybody is ooh ah ooh ah. We would never do that. We'd never do that. But they sit there and talk about how that happened to them mm-hmm. when they were growing up. So what we're doing, we're all on. You know, we're on a precipice here, and, you know, we're in the midst of incredible changes, and they're happening so fast and rapid that we can't even keep up with, you know, administering truly healthy alternatives and and healthy things for people. You know, before they get into these kinds of situations, it it goes back to our educational system. Right. And we've always been lacking when it comes to emotions and behavior and psychology and counseling. I mean, counselors have only been in the school, in the elementary schools for the last, you know, 15 years. Mm -hmm. And so... There has to be a starting point for this where it's like addressed in a very serious manner because right now everybody's constantly aware that this is a business. People are making money off of it. They're sending their kids to school and college and they're, you know, I'm one of them. I work in the business where people are coming in there in these like horrifying situations and it's not good for our community it's not good for our general financial situation because it's pulling people into into the system and once you've got a finger in that system to the end it's not a pretty it's not a pretty sight i would imagine and i would imagine also that there are um 
several of the men that you've worked with who have been repeat offenders. And I mean, what do you do with that when when they're cycling through the system? Well, everybody thinks about repeat offenders in the area of domestic violence and things like that, and they shudder. But most of the repeat offenders come through our substance abuse situations. You know, repeated DUIs. You know, that is a, that is a, a, a poison out here in our mm-hmm. in our community that um, where tremendous amounts of education needs to be done for people, and you know, at a very very early age. And hopefully it's, it's going to, you know, people, I mean, historically, things really don't start happening until lots and lots of people start dying. And the, yeah, that's a sad the, truth. I know, until, until something starts kicking up into that system, because otherwise mm-hmm. it's just like, well, okay, it's business as usual, right? Mm-hmm. Now look, oh, here's this this big massive guy and is this slender girl and he cocks her on the jaw and she's down and out. He had to drag her out of that thing, out of that elevator. Right. And, that that, and that made me shudder. All kinds of hoop and raw about domestic violence and blah, blah, blah. Um, hello, it's been here for a long time. Mm-hmm. And now we have to really start educating. Now, now people who are up are up in the, you know, making, how many million is that guy making, you know, this year? Right. Maybe $12 million this year, and he's hitting a girl, and he's throwing that away, and it's gone now. Right, which it should be. But, you know, they should have seen seen the the signs before that, and, you know, again, it's, you know, all this media exposure to to all of these problems now, people can't hide like they used to. I'm sure this has been going on in the NFL for decades, and they've just turned a blind eye to it. And finally, things are coming to light, which they should, because, you know, there's there's kids that look up to these football players like they're heroes, and they want to be grow up and be like them. Well, no, you really don't want to be like that, and you know, a, a, a you know, violence offender, and and doing all these things on the side that you're getting getting away with breaking the law, you know, committing these heinous acts. I guess the message that you and I are trying to get across to people is like, if there is any kind of potential in a relationship and a new friend and in, you know, uh, in a family member that suddenly has a change of, of personality or anything, if there's anything that comes across to you that is endangering your family and your peace of mind, you need to get help immediately. Mm-hmm. Don't wait. Yeah, because in, in cases like that, it it doesn't get better if you don't do something about it. Action yeah. needs to be taken against, you know, somebody yeah. that's that's losing their temper. Well, we have cell phones now, man. Everybody's out of the closet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, Sot, I, right, Sot, I'm gonna, I, we're gonna come back after this commercial break, okay? The Chicago School of Professional Psychology offers numerous psychology, behavioral, and health-related science graduate degrees at three campuses, Los Angeles, California, including branches in Westwood and Irvine, Chicago, Illinois, and Washington, D.C., and online. The Chicago School prepares students to meet the ever-changing mental health needs of society through classroom experience and real-world training. The Chicago School Counseling Centers in Irvine and Westwood provide caring, confidential, and affordable psychological services to individuals and their families. For more information, visit thechicagoschool.edu. 
And thank you to the Chicago School of Professional Psychology for sponsoring Psych One on One. And if you would like to join us in this conversation, our number is 800 893 9562. Again, that's 800 893 9562. So, Sat, um, when you are doing group therapy with these men who are substance abusers, and in a domestic violence situation, where do you start in a situation like that? Hmm. Well, they come in there pretty angry usually. Um, if not angry, just really upset and traumatized by by the situation. And um, I let them introduce themselves, tell why they're in there and let everybody in the group respond and ask questions and it's just it's an open forum it's completely closed and what's what's said in there stays in there um and what do i say you know welcome and sorry it all happened and if they if they come out I have, you know, really strict rules in there. There's no, there's in no way any defaming or uh, making excuses for what happened. You, you can describe what happened, but I don't allow the excuses. And um, because there's no, there's no growth until you see that in some way you helped create the situation and at least take responsibility for all that you participated in Mm -hmm. going from there okay let's get going so first of all is getting them to how much do they self disclose up front i mean is everybody like um they have to share at least a little bit or are they allowed to keep silent if they want to? I let them pass. You know, we start off with, you know, how was your week? What are your highs and lows? I give them a chance to, if somebody comes in there with a, with an issue that is just like knocking them on their butt, I just, you know, we can spend the entire class talking with them and um, so how many sessions do you have on average with a man that's coming through the system or does it make a a difference whether they're like uh, domestic violence or substance abusers is there uh, different lengths of programs Mm -hmm. yeah usually substance abusers will start off um, a determination of their their past history and how involved they were and what the signs are of um, true addiction and um, if they have had repeated offenses um, you can you can get up to like well I have a lady over there from California that's got 54 hours mm-hmm. of, of um, 54, excuse me, 54 sessions. That's 108 hours. Wow. Yeah. And um, so, and for domestic violence, um, usually we start out at 26 required by the Mesa Courts. So Um, is it in weekly sessions? So it's about a half of a year. And that's you know, and then if it's a repeat, or if there were children in the in the area that were um, privy to what went on, they'll normally get thirty six hours mm-hmm. right away, mm-hmm. and possibly parenting classes, which they should. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you know, doing any domestic violence in front of children. You know, they don't realize that, and they probably don't realize because it's, again, it's that intergenerational cycle 
of maybe the offender saw that when they were growing up, that appeared normal, and then they repeated it in their own households as adults turn around right. and they start doing the same thing that was done to them when they were children. Yeah, it's what we do, right? Yeah, yeah. Is that <laughs> Have you ever made that... a mistake in your life? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> Everybody's made mistakes. But the key oh, is well, learning I'm, from your mistakes, yeah. right? Right. Exactly. And that's and, and the true test of being um, a responsible adult is taking responsibility for everything mm -hmm. in your life. Not some, all. So what percentage of the men that you work with get to that point, would you estimate? Where they walk out of their room, out of the room on the last day and they're good. <laughs> <laughs> and they go out and behave. <laughs> um, you know, we do have repeat offenders. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no question about it. Um, but we do have those that succeed a lot. That's good. And um, I like I like the atmosphere that goes on at my place of business, and that is everything for the um, you know for the real healing that needs to take place. And that's our approach: is this is not the punitive part of what has happened to you that's already over you know you spent time in the in the tents with joe or pio's oh. um fellows yes <laughs> yes they you still have tent that. city out there with, with <laughs> sheriff joe yeah. huh yeah notorious <laughs> out in the, the arizona area it, he's, he's been on national news uh, he's he's yeah he's something else how long has he been in office now long mm -hmm. time yeah he's mm -hmm. an interesting character yes and I challenge I challenge them to um, look at what's happening as you know a learning experience and take advantage of it. Um, you're not paying. I mean, they're paying. If they were paying to go into a real counseling group um, on their own privately, I mean, they'd be paying about one hundred and twenty dollars a session. Mm -hmm. And here they're paying twenty. Yeah, that's a good deal. And, um, yeah, if something bad happened, take a look at it now and see how you can grow from this situation. So what makes the difference between a man that starts taking responsibility for his actions and maybe the light bulb goes off over his head and he goes... I need to make a change. This isn't working anymore, and I'm hurting myself, and I'm hurting the people that I love versus the person that walks out of there and just like, okay, you know, whatever, whatever, and I'm going to go out and do whatever the hell I want to do when I get out of here and is the repeat offender. What's the difference between those two clients? <laughs> well, one, it warms my heart, and I feel absolutely ecstatic. And it's a real high, you know, almost a religious experience. And the other, job security, because I know he's coming back. Yeah, sadly you enough. Know, and that's, sadly, that's just the way it is. And um, you do what you can, and you try to take as little home with you as possible. And so that um, I'm able to go in next time with a objectivity and, and care and loving in my heart, and that's otherwise why I do it. Right, exactly. You have to go in with a, almost like a clean slate every morning when you go into work as a therapist, correct? Absolutely. Yeah, that's challenging. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's a good one, you know. And on a good day, it happens. Yes, yes. So what is your most challenging type of client to work with? Well, I've had my heart go pitter-patter, you know, with somebody completely tatted up and having had prison time, and they're not a happy camper. Mm -hmm. And um, they're, the way things operate in the, in the prison environment is through intimidation. 
foundation. And that's one thing that folks coming out of uh, prison have, that's something that they need to drop that immediately. Even though they used it to survive in that environment, can't do it here. Or you end up in this group. Mm -hmm. And um, I teach a a group of uh, parolees, uh, a substance abuse group, and those are the issues that we talk about. And because they're there and they're, you know, living in a half, halfway house or with a relative, some are on their own. Um, but it's tough. It's tough when you've gone into that prison system and come back out. I mean, it's tough. Yeah, I bet they come out a little more hardened when they come out, correct? Well, there's, yeah, that. And, you know, certainly they had experiences there and um, just trying to get a job as a felon. Um, you know, get into something where you can, you know, have your, your dreams, you know, realized, you know, which takes money today. So it's it's difficult for them. But uh, just keep, keep at it and giving what you can yeah it's a, uh, don't 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 give up never surrender and i'm a lot tougher than i used to be <laughs> i bet <laughs> yeah you've always been a um gentle soul you're still a gen- yeah you're still a gentle soul in my book so you can you can go in and be tough with them but you come out and you're a different person so <laughs> Switch it on, switch it off, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I understand. So we are going to take a bit of a musical break, and we're going to come back, and we are going to continue the conversation with Sat Khalsa in Mesa, Arizona. Welcome back to Psych One on One with Julianne Good and Sat Khalsa in Mesa, Arizona. 
We are talking about men's issues and group therapy and the work that Sot does in Mesa. And Sot, I would like to ask you about uh, incorporating some of your spiritual background into the groups that you work with. Right. Um, well, um, I divulge something about myself, my past. I don't, you know, hesitate. Um, anything that I think that will inspire somebody to, you know, take a move and reach out, I do it. And I, I've i studied yoga and, um, you know, what kinds of foods to eat and when to eat them and what to mix and what not to mix. And so I, when, when I, like, for example, if I'm talking with somebody in the substance abuse, one of the things we talk about is, you know, what do you start taking care of in order to get your, so that your emotional state is, is not always, um, you know, pulling you towards using more and getting yourself into trouble and, you know, having a good diet, getting rest, getting exercise, all these kinds of things are necessary. And so I'll go through, uh, you know, a diet and what you what you can and should and would be better off eating to prevent you know uh, bringing more stress into your life and um, for domestic violence folks and I understand every class that that I teach I somehow bring in because you know me Julian I'm kind of a you know, I, I'm the old hippie counselor. <laughs> Yogi. We love you for it. That's right. <laughs> Down to earth. That's right. <laughs> and I just, uh, you know, I tell him, you know, like, don't forget where you are. And if a person is making these, like, big mistakes in their life, that's, like, taking all of their possibility for a... a, a good future well then I understand that the best thing that I can do for them is to somehow get them to understand to look at where are you you're on a little ball of mud shooting through space and we're kind of unique and start having more of an attitude of gratitude like Yogi Bhajan used to say mm -hmm. and um you know, talking along those lines, and I'll we'll, I'll talk to them about exercising and taking care of their body, and you know, going into those kinds of things. We we do get into spiritual things sometimes, but I kind of shy away from it. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, you know, I've had you know Mormon people in there before, and I've had you know real devout Christians in there before that you know talked about Christ and. I don't, like, get in there and say, you know, we don't do that. You know, I just say that's absolutely a good way to think and um, and then move it into another area. So, Yeah, well, I think a lot of people don't realize, too, that whatever kind of counseling you're doing, unless it, it was, it, it's within a religious realm, like at a church or synagogue or whatever, that counselors really kind of need to stay away from the religious issues because that's 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 part of our ethics. Well, but you know, reality is, it's very difficult to do that, but you can do it gracefully, mm -hmm. and um, you know, without feeling the person is being shut down, right? And that and that their views are respected. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, we just can't influence them one way or the other. I think it's the exactly. the the situation is like if if you have a spiritual or religious practice, and it is helping you become a better person, is helping you to keep grounded and centered. Then, by all means, practice that. Right. Well, the um, the wonderful thing about counseling is, you know, that I that I get from it because it really you know, it feeds my soul, you know that. Mm -hmm. And um, the fastest way to learn something is to teach it. 
And so I learn every day a lot from these folks and the and the mistakes that they're making are just they just you know, they're incredible, I mean. And I think that my portrayal to them is somebody who hey, I could have been there myself. That is that is a I think something that could happen to me even. Mm-hmm. And now here's the choice you made. Um luckily I've made choices that haven't you know, put me into that situation, but that's the one you did. Do you know why? And, you know, it made me think of Samuel Clemens. He made this, this comment, you know, two, the most two important days in your in a person's life is, number one, the day you're born, and number two, the day you know why. Mm, that's deep. Mm-hmm. And um, that's kind of where I try to take them on a, on a daily basis through whatever... Uh, subject matter that we bring up and a lot of it is didactic and um, needs to get it across so that they know the technical terms and things like that but it can always branch off into more you know esoteric and um, personal feeling stuff mm-hmm. And it, it sounds to me like you're trying to bring them to the point of learning meaning and purpose within life to see beyond the choices that they've made and make better, healthier choices down the road instead of keeping repeating the cycle and, you know, having to see you for another 26 weeks up the road somewhere, right? Exactly. Stay out of the limelight. Yeah. <laughs> it's time to put on their bathroom mirror, stay out of the limelight. And if you know, I mean, I mean, realistically, we there's not one of us that hasn't had situations in our life that have left scars. Mm-hmm. And any one of us, and and when we made the most silly mistakes in our life you know it isn't like we got up that morning and said hey i'm going to screw up my life today right hopefully Um, not they're they're unplanned and they're just like and um i respect that human characteristic in every one of us we can make we are capable of making some really incredible mistakes Mm mm-hmm they're All called accidents. They're called accidents. And we learn from them or we don't. Mm-hmm. And the only way to really learn from it is to take full responsibility or at least your part yeah. and be real about it. And don't run from it. And because if you try to run from it, you're going to run right into another one of my groups. <laughs> <laughs> Take your pick. Which one would you like to do, right? Hey, we're living on a ball. You can't go any place back to where you started. Exactly. <laughs> I know. And you want to go back to a place that is full of wisdom, understanding, and acceptance of your stuff. Mm-hmm. And enlightenment. You yeah. know, coming to the point where it's like, okay, well, I'm, I made mistakes. It's behind me. I learned from them. I, you know, I, I went and made my apologies to people. I reprimanded the situation, and now I get to have a fresh start. It's never too late to have a fresh start in life, period. Never never, n- never too old. That, that's my biggest motto right now is you are never too old to change your life. Thanks. On the newspaper here, oh, I guess about a year ago, two 91-year-old. Native American lady out here on one of our reservations that got their doctorate. Ah, I love it. (laughs) (laughs) In philosophy, right? (laughs) 
Uh, yeah. The sages. You know, we're, we're all in this in this muddly mess that is going on today together. Nobody's going anywhere unless you go somewhere, mm-hmm. and we're all going somewhere eventually. Yes, hopefully forward. Um, just that whole concept of, of passing it forward is that what it's called? Mm. Um, you know, where you do something for somebody, you paying it forward. Yeah. Forward. Start seeing, seeing, you know, human nature and the creation is something divine instead of something to manipulate and and get it, get what you can out of it. Mm-hmm. And that whole thought process is just got us in a turmoil on this little ball of mud. Yes, it has. And it's caused chaos. And I just, I praise what you're doing. I think it is so cool. Thank you. You too, you're doing some great work out there. I know. It's hard know. stuff. Yes. <laughs> yes. So we're going to take our last commercial break and we will come back with Sat Kalsa. Are you searching for answers and insight to life issues? Is the behavior of family or friends questionable or concerning? Find tips and possible solutions from the convenience of your own PC, cell phone, or tablet at therapycable.com. Therapy Cable has the most comprehensive library of contemporary therapy videos online. Help may be as easy as a few clicks away. Therapy Cable offers comprehensive therapy videos ranging from addiction to self-care and contact information for qualified providers. Find the answers to your life challenges at therapycable.com. And welcome back to Psych One on One with Julianne Good and Sat Khalsa. And we're going to wrap up this session in a, in a little while here. And um, Sat, what, have you ever worked with men that when you got done with all the sessions, you thought this person can't be fixed? Can't be fixed. Oof. Well, nobody comes through my my situation that I I feel that about them. Um, I mean, even the folks that are there, you know, in the pro group, they're just we're all just so. I don't know. I, I felt this, you know, before I got into yoga, you know, with Yogi G back in the day. And it's the feeling like, you know, gosh, we're all so innocent. You know, we're, we're, we're so new in this whole situation and we're just trying to muddle our way through it. And I, for some reason that had <laughs> that ridiculous thought has carried me through to this day. And, I just continue having faith in all of us and and whatever, you know, the creative force is, you know, doing. And, you know, it's the only game in town, for God's sake. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I don't plan to get, you know, like throw in the towel on it yet. Um, we're still, you know, we all got to keep trucking and making the best of it. Otherwise, the alternative is sucks. Mm-hmm. You know, don't give up, never surrender. You know, Galaxy Quest, best movie out there. So you keep them pretty hopeful and on track and trying to see the big picture of life. Yep. Yeah. Never give up, never surrender. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's got to be hard because I would imagine some of the men are pretty, you know, hardened and he said that you know a lot of them come in with you know probably a lifetime of excuses of why they haven't done this and why they behave like that and you know just Uh, just even trying to drop the excuses or look at them for for what they have served the purpose that they've served um i just kind of see them as some very unruly yoga students (laughs) <laughs> you get some mats out for them <laughs> make them do uh, breath of fire <laughs> well, I, at least I do it yeah <laughs> before groups and I do I get up every morning I do my stuff you know still and yoga keeps me 
keeps me balanced and going, and I and I eat good and tennis, you know, weekly, and just um, get out and love life. Mm-hmm. What I, I hear the other day, if you aren't having fun, you're doing something really wrong. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, you got to have some fun. You got to see some humor here and there, right? Can't take life too seriously. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It exercises the muscles of the face better than anything. It does, and it, it just imagine. I mean, the internal um, exercising you get to just in your your stomach and your your diaphragm is just awesome, right? You know, I got people in my group that that have a have an issue with my 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 age. Because I feel like I'm 74, and I'm still riding a motorcycle and playing tennis and blah, blah, blah. And they're just, you know, kind of in awe of that whole situation. And I let them know, like, look, the only way you're going to stay young in your soul is to get rid of your resentments. Mm -hmm. Figure them out. Work them out. Do what you can. Don't. Take your final breath being pissed off. Right. It's just, you know, don't know what's going to happen. Very few of us have any ideas to what's going to happen, you know, later. There's a lot of faith. But in reality, I can't remember. Can you? No. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I know. Yeah, and you're right. You, you've got to you've got to drop the uh, need for vengefulness and regrets and all that heavy baggage that one can carry a, a, around with them. You know, forever, forever. Uh, so many of my clients have relatives, brothers, sisters. Fathers, mothers, they haven't talked to them for years. Uh, it's just, it freaks me out. But that's the way it is these days. Yeah. Is it because of uh, the criminal activity and the addiction? And is that usually what the case is? Can be that. Can be that. Can be just, you know, circumstances of. of Parenthood and broken families. I mean, how many broken families there are? You know, how many people are? <laughs> I mean, the people that are coming in in my des- domestic violence group. Most of them are separating from the person that they were living with, mm-hmm. be it a wife or a girlfriend, because that is because it's a, it's a number one. It's a felony, right. domestic violence on your record. And that's no small thing. Mm-hmm. And the money that it's taken, you know, through the whole thing. So that is an unfortunate ramification of, uh, or a result of that experience for these people very often. Yeah. yeah. And there's it's so a, many... It's a bad sickness in our society, and we've got to see it like that. Right. Well, hopefully through the bad press of NFL, people are going to start getting educated about really what goes on with with domestic violence cases. And if you know of anybody that is, that's the situation that they're living in, or you're one of those people, please go get help. There's a lot of help out there and it it happens quite frequently and it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's something that you can get help for, period. Exactly. Boy, you're good. Yeah, well, actually, you know, because of working with the, the domestic violence shelter for so long, I was, you know, that, yeah. that's, one of, that's one of my um, advocacies mm-hmm. is, is talking to people about DV situations because it, it is common. And it's, we're still living in a society where, you know, if we'll just, you know, be quiet about. We won't report it. We won't get involved. We were afraid if we get involved, something horrible is going to happen. But most of the time, it's like if you don't get involved somehow, then something worse is probably going to happen. Or it's a possibility. 
So, you know, I... It will always get worse. Yeah. It will always get worse. Yeah. Unless something intervenes and, and comes in and changes that system. And it can be changed, but it is work. As you know, you have to work with the offenders. I've worked with the victims and the children. And that's a whole different world. A lot, lot of attachment problems and a lot of emotional problems that, that on both sides. You know, it, it's, it's really a tough issue, but it, can, it, it is workable. There's a lot of world problems going on right now, Julianne, and I think that if we just, like, start with, you know, take baby steps as we start, you know, opening ourselves up to resolving our resentments and issues and start with the people around us, start hugging and loving and telling the people around you that you love them. Yes, that's important. And uh, it's and it only takes one in the family to start that going. Yeah. Um, it's such an easy thing to do and so so good and so healthy. Mm-hmm. Speaking beautiful words is easier than one would think, but just start doing it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So is there anything else you would like to add to our conversation as we're wrapping up? Mm. I'm so grateful for you doing this, and I think your listeners are very, very blessed to have you. And uh, Thank you. Thank you for having me. And I thank you. It. Thank you, Sa, and, uh, and your clients are very fortunate to have you, too. You're a wonderful person, and just such a good friend so i really appreciate thank you and come in for david's birthday okay i will (laughs) go swimming when it's not frying out in phoenix that's lovely i like that (laughs) okay thank you so much sock calsa for being on my show thank you all right take care bye-bye and if you would like to contact me, my email address is jgoode8 at verizon.net. My business number is 562-234-4650. And my office is down in Irvine, California. And also, if you would like to check out my uh, Psychology Today website. You can go to Psychology Today and put in Julie Ann Good. That's J-U-L-I-E dash A-N-N-G-O-O-D-E. And I would love to hear from you. Please contact me if I can help you with anything. I'm here to help. So I would like to thank my board operator, Andy Jackson. Thank you so much for helping out tonight. And our executive producer, Jeremy Hansen, you rock. Thank you so much for being here. And I am on every Monday evening from 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm also archived onto iTunes Store. And this show will be downloaded within 24 to 48 hours at that site and also on skidrowstudios.com. So keep joining us. The Qumran Report is on next. And thank you so much for listening. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other now. Take care. Bye.